Welcome to Paint by Monster with me, your host, Easel Monster. This is the next illustration in the Fire Truck Dust book. Now, sometime you might want to Google a guy named Grant Wood. Painted a painting called American God. That's the painting that I am modeling this cartoon after. Ducks. Now, I'm not looking at American God. I can look through this. I stared at the piece for a while and, and sort of took a hard look at how it was constructed and the composition and the angles and the lines. And so I'm drawing this from memory. Acrylic gouache here. This is uh, Turner acrylic gouache. I bought that online. So, all right, as I'm trying to put together my ideas for what are the components of a Paint My Monster episode, one of the persistent ideas is teaching. I, I should probably teach you about something, so I'm, what am I going to teach you about this time? Well, how about this? Here's a list of five things that I've been thinking about talking to high school students and telling them, all right? This relates to becoming an artist and, and, and growing as an artist, all right? If you're going to invest your time into something that's going to develop you as an artist, what, what are those things? Here's a list of five things. Number one, be a lifelong learner. And I mean good stuff. If you're not feeding your creative self anything, then nothing good is going to come out of you. Get excited about learning stuff. Find out what feeds your creativity and, and go teach yourself things about that. Be a lifelong learner. Number two, the path to excellence looks like this. First, you copy what somebody else is doing, and then, once you have some mastery of their process, you begin to explore your own ideas. All artists are plagiarists at first. They just, they don't stay there. You know, one of the things, that if you, if you begin to look around in a museums, if you travel to museums and go visit them, one of the things that you'll see is they usually not only have works by an artist, they also have the art that that artist collected. Sometimes you can go see a museum exhibit of the collected works of this artist or that artist. I saw one for Edward Gorey. Just little trinkets that he picked up, other people's artwork that he liked to live with. I think that's wonderful. So, all artists are plagiarists at first. You're going to be influenced or inspired by somebody. It's just, don't stay there. Don't copy somebody else. Go make your own art. Number three, get to work. The secret to successful creative careers is working, not waiting for inspiration. Sitting around and waiting for inspiration is for suckers and hacks. That's not real. Inspiration is looking for people who are at work. Arnold Palmer, the golfer, said, the more I practice, the luckier I get. Number four, get in the habit of writing your ideas down in such a way that you can go back and look at them. This list I'm reading you, it's a list I wrote in one of my sketchbooks a while back to talk to high school students about, and here it is. I wrote it down, now I can go back to it. Number five, learn how to draw. Drawing is a skill, it's not a talent. No baby was ever born knowing how to do it. Michelangelo said, if you knew how hard I worked at this, none of my work would seem miraculous to you. That's a list of five ideas to feed your creative soul with. If you're feeding yourself anything. I hope you are. Hey, here's another idea that I've been pondering on, musing on, thinking about. Here it is. It's a definition of art. Art is an idea expressed without language. And I don't want to hear any of the BS about, well, the language of art. No, 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 no. A guy who spoke only Italian 500 years ago 
has painted paintings that I can look at and com- have communicated to me what he is saying with no words taking place in the communication. He never spoke English and he never needed to in order to communicate those ideas to me. So, a definition of art. Art is an idea expressed without language. Just an interesting thought. One of the things that it immediately leads me to is, well, then what do I do with comics? Again, I'm just floating this kind of, I'm chewing on this idea of art as an expression of an idea without language. Something to think about. Hey, you probably got your own definition of art. Maybe you're thinking about this. I hope you have time to think philosophically in your life. That's one of the things that you'll want to do as you grow as an artist. Art is not just the stuff you make with your hands and your eyes. It's also the way that you think. The front runner for what day of the week a Paint by Monster video should be and how long they should be is it should be Saturday morning. And it should be between 5 and 10 minutes long. That sounds like the out front winner. So, you know, I'm beginning to lean the direction of that kind of thinking, even though we've got till December 7th to come up with the answer. But regardless, this video is being posted on Saturday morning at 8 a.m. so that everybody can wake up with their coffee and watch a Paint by Monster episode. But I'm not just posting this video. I am also posting a playlist. So if you are watching the playlist version of this video, you will see about a half an hour of little content, a 10 minute paint by monster video, and then some other content, things that I watch, people I watch, YouTubers that I watch. I think the first one that I will show you is a man named Frank Howarth, and he's an architect and a woodworker and a number of other things, but he's just a genius that putters around in his own artistic studio space with his CNC machine, and he makes stuff. He's a YouTuber. I will show you some Keith Newsteed, uh, maker of Automata in the United Kingdom. That's just beautiful stuff. I will show you some other little videos of some other people that I occasionally watch and put together and half an hour to an hour worth of content that you can watch on Saturday morning and you could watch together with your children. Uh, Well, I I probably won't. You you know, if your children are are a little world savvy, you could watch it with your children if you don't mind your children saying dirty words sometimes. I don't think I mind dirty words. You know, when, when, when my little monsters... One of the rites of passage for my own little monsters was when they turned into a teenager that was 13 years old, they were allowed to say any cuss word they ever wanted to in front of me. It was a rite of passage. Here you go. You can now say any dirty cuss word you ever want to say, but only in front of me. If I ever hear you saying that in front of another parent, I will grind you into powder and eat you as a sandwich. Don't do that. I didn't ever have to eat any of them. They all were very careful to only say the cuss words in front of me and probably their friends, but they all said, you know, that just took the sting right out of cuss words. You know, we just we were able to say them, and so we just learned to use other words. So just as an idea for those of you raising children, I'm just saying, children, there are words and they're all fun to say and they all have their purposes. I'm not saying don't cuss. You'll not hear that from me. Sometimes a cuss word is the exact right helpful word. You won't learn them from me. Learn how to cuss in your own language. Don't come to me. Pick it up on the street like the rest of us did.